Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. How Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are celebrating Archie's first birthday. The world rejoiced last year when Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex welcomed their first child, Archie, into the world. Many months have passed since then and now, Archie is turning one year old in just a few weeks. It will definitely be a huge milestone for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. As such, a lot of fans are probably wondering about how Prince Harry and Meghan will be celebrating Archie's first birthday. The royal family is notoriously private, but here is what we know so far. Archie's birthday will be celebrated in Scotland with Queen Elizabeth. It seems that Prince Harry and Meghan are not going to skimp on Archie's first birthday celebration. According to Us Weekly, an insider shared that the Sussexes have plans to go to Balmoral Castle in Scotland to celebrate with Queen Elizabeth. They have reportedly also talked to the Queen about having a picnic on the grounds of the estate. The source said that this will be quite nice for the Queen since she has not seen Archie since last summer. Most notably, Prince Harry and Meghan declined Her Majesty's invitation to come to Balmoral last year, so this looks to be a great occasion for Archie to come to Scotland. Moreover, Balmoral will be a nice place for Archie to enjoy nature. The insider shared, Archie loves being outside, and you can already tell he's inherited Prince Charles' passion for nature. He gets so excited at seeing all the trees. Now that he's just walking, he's into everything. He'll often end up covered in mud. Archie will also have a second celebration in North America. For friends and family in North America, the insider revealed that Archie will have a second celebration on the continent as well. Allegedly, Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, as well as her best friends like Jessica Mulroney and Abigail Spencer, will be invited. It is not clear yet where exactly in North America this birthday event will be held. The Sussexes are currently residing in Los Angeles, so it is possible that they will have their celebration somewhere in Southern California. Barchi will reportedly get some exciting gifts for his birthday. Aside from all the fun celebrations planned, Archie can also look forward to the gifts that he will be getting. The source told us weekly that Meghan has plans to get him her favorite book, The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein, for his first birthday. Meghan actually revealed in an interview a few years ago that this is the book she would love to read to her kids in the future. Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth will allegedly give Archie a rocking horse. This is partly because, as the insider revealed, Archie is a huge fan of horses and squeals with excitement whenever he sees one. His mother will also be serving animal cupcakes for his birthday celebration. Will Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have a second child? Now that Archie is getting a bit older, fans are already dying to know whether there will be another child joining the Sussex family. Prince Harry has shared that he would love to have two kids, and both he and Meghan seem to really enjoy being parents. As such, it's reasonable to believe that Archie will not be an only child for very long. A royal insider recently revealed that Prince Harry and Meghan might start trying it earnest pretty soon to conceive a second baby. While the world is living amidst a lot of uncertainties with the coronavirus pandemic, Good morning. Um, today we are uh, announcing that we do have another case of COVID-19 here in British Columbia. That will be our eighth case. It seems that this has given the Sussexes a lot of time to bond as a family and decide for sure whether they could have another child. Meghan Markle is down to earth when no one is watching. From the moment, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry got engaged in November 2017, the Duchess brought her own personal flair to the British royal family. The royals exist within an inclusive and archaic institution that adheres to rules and traditions of a past time. The Duchess already had her own career and ambitions, 
well before meeting Prince Harry, which she hoped would translate into royal life. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Though Meghan is reportedly well wiped by the royals, her modern take on royal life seemed to greatly offend the British public and press. As a result, the press began picking the Duchess apart. After enduring this for years, the Sussexes have decided that royal life is not sustainable for them. In January 2020, they announced their intent to resign as senior working members. Now they are outside of the royal fold, living in Los Angeles, California eager to begin a new phase in their lives' life. Still, despite all of the terrible things that have been said about her over the years, Meghan is reportedly super down to earth. Meghan Markle was called too independent by royal experts. With a career as an actress and activist long before she even met Prince Harry, the Duchess of Sussex had been living her best life well before she became royalty. Marrying Prince Harry at age 36 meant that she lived an entire life prior to him. Though she gave up a great deal when they wed, moving to the UK, stuttering her lifestyle brand, the TIG, giving up her role on USA suits, and much of her privacy. She was unwilling to become a shell of her former self. Unfortunately, many royal experts interpreted this as the Duchess rebelling in her role. She was even called too independent. An insider told Daily Mail in 2019, even though Meghan was a famous actress, she could still do what she wanted in the way of getting around freely. But, in her current role, she can't go anywhere without her protection team, and that's a massive constraining force on an individual like her. Meghan Markle wanted to regain control over her life. While Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, dated Prince William since she was a college student, the Duchess of Sussex was given a crash course on royal life. It was increasingly challenging for her to give over the reins of life. Duncan Larkamy, who covered the royal family for London's The Sun, explained, As an actress, Meghan expects perfection. But when you're in the royal family, you have to learn that it's not about you, it's about what you represent. In the end, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex decided it was not worth it to remain within the royal fold if they had no control over their destinies. Um, what that does internally is probably really damaging. It's not enough just to survive something right. That's not the point of life, Meghan explained in the revealing documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey. The Duchess revealed that she attempted to adopt the British stiff upper lip, but what that does internally is probably really damaging. Meghan Markle is very down to earth. Despite how she's been received in the UK, the Duchess is still very well, liked elsewhere, and she is reportedly very down to earth. Through my work, I am fortunate to meet some incredible, interesting and inspirational people, and over the past two one half years, I feel honored to have spent much time with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The Duchess' former facialist, Sarah Chapman, revealed on her Instagram. With Meghan, what began as a client relationship quickly turned into a dear friendship, and she welcomed me into their lives. I feel very grateful to be a small part of their journey, observing the passion for everything they do, and compassion for the causes and people they meet, but also to witness the moments other people don't see who they are at home, as parents, as partners and friends, the kind and very down-to-earth people they are when no one is watching. It looks like moving on was the right move for the Sussexes. So there you have it, that's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.